All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Graham Schmidt. I'm the artistic director of Breaking Spring Theater. I'm extremely proud and happy to be here this evening after such a, a fantastic production. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, two people before the cast join us on the stage who are quickly uh, getting dressed back in the dressing room. Uh, the first is a person to whom we all, I think, owe a great debt of gratitude, the mastermind of this production, uh, somebody who's been working on it since the fall of 2011. That's director Liz Fisher. Second is our, our honored guest uh, and someone who has uh, made a great commitment to the works of Maxim Kurichkin, as well as the cause of uh, disseminating, celebrating, investigating uh, new Russian drama in the United States. And that's our uh, that's John J. Hamlin, our translator. Thank you so much for being here. So uh, first, suppose I'd just like to invite you, John, uh, if you could. You know, share with us your impressions, your reaction. I mean, this is a, a text that you've lived with uh, for quite a while, um, uh, but to this production uh, here, if you would. Well, the, the big thing to say uh, is that this is the one play that Maxime wrote that has not a single stage direction in it. It's all dialogue. So it's an invitation to a director, but uh, I've never seen, uh, I never imagined that a director would do this much with the text. So all the action that you saw up there, um, all the things that the actors did and interacted, that was all created by Liz, and I assume some collaboration with the actors. But uh, Liz really deserves uh, great honor. Uh, for taking this thing on the page and turning it into a, a full vision. So um, I was wowed um, by uh, all three characters and the way that they um, manifested the forces. I feel like you could feel them manifesting the force of vodka and television and that other one. Um, <laughs> that, that you could really, because that's what, what the whole conceit of the play is, is that these are not supposed to be people, they're supposed to be forces out there on the stage, and, and I felt like the relationship between them and the hero made it clear how they impacted his, his life. Yeah. Well, before we uh, open up the audience, and since you're here, I'd like to ask a couple more questions. One is something that came up just the other night, um, you know, it's stated at the beginning of the play, uh, that the that the author is not represented by the hero <laughs> in this play, and uh, I think you've probably spent the most amount of time with Maxime, who I, I hope is actually, and I'm quite confident is still watching the event, Maxime. <laughs> um, uh, but I wonder if you might tell us uh, a little bit about the you know compare and contrast uh, what we see here, the uh, Noel Gollum's uh, hero, his portrayal, and uh, the man. The myth, Maxim <laughs> We should turn off the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I think that uh, I wouldn't call it an alter ego, but uh, I think that the hero is a sort of synthesis of Max at moments in his life plus a type of a Russian man of his generation that he has seen a lot of. You know, Max has a lot of contemporary friends um, who have kind of gone through uh, the history of the Soviet Union uh, and, and just grown up together. Um, and it is a very particular generation um, that fate uh, put between those uh, legs, let's say, of the camel. Uh, and, uh, and, and yeah, so that's why I think he draws it from. Uh, we talked about how he's called the hero, possibly in reference to Lermontov's novel, a hero of our time from the 1830s, and that the hero there, Pachorin, is supposed to represent a certain type from that generation. And I think in the same way, the hero is not Max, it's people in that generation. And here, here comes our uh, lovely guy. So I'll have to sit in the hot seat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Jude's on his way up, but if you guys would introduce yourself really quickly, please. Uh, I'm Adrian Schler. I'm Joey Hood. Noel Gawain. Uh, Jude Hickey is on his way. Yes, he's on his way. Oh, right. We've got an important conference call. 
<laughs> oh, is it? It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, one more question I have for you, John. This is something that we talked about a little bit because uh, you had been reading your translation on the plane. You, myself, and technology director Robert Matney, as well as uh, Liz, uh, had an opportunity to meet today. And um, one thing that came up was how this play does or does not fit into uh, the tradition of Russian playwriting. Uh, Russian literature, that is, more broadly. I wonder if you might speak to that. Well, you know, I, it was John Friedman, hi John, in Moscow, um, who pointed out the connection between the title, uh, A Hero of Our Time, and the hero in this place. So I think that's part of it, um, to, to make that link, that this is supposed to be a representative work uh, for a whole generation. Um, but beyond that, I think that, um, there is a part, there's a kind of figure in Russian literature who's the sensualist, uh, who is uh, tormented uh, in the aftermath of what he does. Um, and you know, that goes back at least to Dostoevsky. Um, and, and you know, Russia is both a great Orthodox Christian nation and a great vodka drinking nation, <laughs> and a wintry nation. And uh, I think that combination makes for characters who move back and forth between indulging their sensuality in big, big ways through the winter, the long winter, and then waking up in the spring even the spring of a day, the morning, the dawn, and having you know the light come through the church windows that they grew up with, um, making them wring their hands and swear that that is it. Mm. Yeah, it's the last time. That's the last time. Until <laughs> next year. That's right. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> well, at this point, I'd like to uh, ask anybody in the audience, um, you know, this is a play that originally found resonance in you know, Russia, in Moscow, uh, contemporary Moscow. And I wondered uh, if you might say, one, if you have any reactions to this production, uh, but also I wonder how, how accessible it felt. Uh, and of course, the idea was to produce it here for y'all. Reaction. When was the place set? When was it set? Um, I believe 2003. That's when it came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he said he was 33 years old and he was born in 1970. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jude, we saved the seat for you. Oh, right there. Oh. <laughs> When you get a play that you probably have read in Russian, I assume, and then you get a translation, uh, do you get the each to change things, or, or do you just leave it as is? I actually was pretty, uh, not to say hands off uh, with this, uh, this process was really driven by Liz, and uh, you know there was a there was a you know we have a select thanks to what was called the New Voices, New Visions Initiative uh, that was conducted by an organization called the Center for International Theater Development, uh, led by Philip Arnaud, directed by John Friedman. Um, there are about 29 plays that have been written about the, over the past 10 years from a movement in Russia called New Russian Drama. And we have access to translations uh, from a range of translators from about 14 different playwrights. Um, I, Everybody in the United States has free access to these uh, uh, translations. And we've really been mining them here at Great Street Theater. Um, I want, I'll, I'll say I find John's translations to be superior. Uh, I don't go back and check the original Russian, um, because when you read something and it reads as smoothly and beautifully as, as John's do, um, then you don't, um, 
I have no urge to check. <laughs> I would be disappointed to find that, that any correction needed to be made. They're all improved. So I don't know, Liz. What was your experience? In, this is a script that you you discovered and you were interested in uh, Well, th this whole sort of process came about uh, as a result of a lot of this past year's New Russian Drama Festival. We were highlighting Max's work. Uh, Graham was directing a, a, a full production of his play, The Schooling of Bento Bancha. And uh, similarly to what we did for the first year, uh, we wanted to have a number of staged readings, and Graham had asked me if I wanted to direct one. So I started reading all of Max's plays that we have translations of because I don't speak a lick of Russian. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say. So, and, and this was one, I mean, just from the, the title alone and the little synopsis, which we have copies of, I found that was very interesting. And I started reading the translation and was really impressed with it, thought that it read really sort of cleanly and it had a lot of humor and was very accessible for, for an American audience and also as a bonus would make for a very easy to do uh, staged reading. And um, uh, just on, on the merits of, of that alone, put together a cast, uh, Noel and Adrian were a part of that original cast for the staged reading, uh, did it when Max and John were actually over, uh, John Friedman uh, were over for the New Russian Drama Festival and people really enjoyed it and found it, you know, found it to be a very funny, very entertaining uh, text. So we decided, Graham asked if we'd like to do it as a full production, and said, absolutely, yes, please. So here we are today. Other things, because of the differences in the cultures that were hard to do, that couldn't translate <laughs> in something that maybe American audiences wouldn't understand because of the cultural differences? Even the poet, for example. The role of the poet in Russian society, mm -hmm. where as we say, as here, opposed no, to America. it's not like mm -hmm. that poet that we would recognize and we would know the poetry. Uh, uh, you mean and the I'm going to segue on top of this yeah. question yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm thinking of something similar. Think of the title. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the word "fucking" in English yeah. and how that F word has so many uses and variations. And, and I'm just wondering what the Russian word is. It a word that also is used as a curse word and an mm -hmm. adjective and an adverb? And, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, actually, the, the roots, there are kind of four roots of Russian profanity, and they all have to do with sex. Uh, I'll let you use your imagination for what the other ones are. Um, and those roots um, get into the middle of all sorts of words. And so the, the word yibat is to fuck in Russian, and it just shows up as the root, and then there's prefixes and suffixes for yeah, anything. Okay. So you can do anything in a sort of fucking style. Like in, like in the same word then? Yes, yes, but there, there's also a lot of the word hui, which is dick, uh, and that shows up, and like if you try to translate that as like, literally, that? it doesn't work, and so we have to use fuck instead. Right. Um, in that expression. So there's a lot of sort of manipulation uh, because they're so creative with the, <laughs> the, the making of words that have these profane bases to them. And, and actually, the English language is, is fairly limited by comparison. Wow. Since we're on this topic, it's, yeah. you know, you know, it's, it's what's difficult sometimes, too. It's like there are different forms of speech. For example, uh, the word bizietz, uh, which means pussy. Uh, is actually a verb. So, wow. you know, so I should have been wow, you is deep. But it's like, um, I'm sorry. My dad is here. My dad is here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a point of culture. Right. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then there's another one. <laughs> I was gonna. I, 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 I an educator, and I was gonna. Um, say, hey, there's a slide stream on my first. I was just about to get post, and I put the link in it. It had the title of the play. And I thought the D is on my Facebook. I don't think I'm gonna post this because there is that thing about the language. I'm sorry, but I, I was like, oh my gosh. Well, I look on the on your. Uh, I mean, you put the, you've got, yeah, if you don't have the, don't it's the same with me. I, I didn't do any uh, promotional stuff on I Facebook with the, the whole word, simply because i got so much family. That's interesting. I understand that. If the, if the people doing the reviews had reviewed it that way, mm -hmm. instead of the word F, or had put F 
I'm not nearly as elastic as what you profile my <laughs> Myself and Rob are kind of, uh, Robert Madney kind of pilot. The, he, there he is over there. He coordinated this entire live stream event. Please give it a But just from our experience, we kind of are in the driver's seats of the Breaking String Theater promotional machine, and uh, which includes Facebook, our Facebook page. And when we first used the word fuck, I think it was probably in June, um, and we have people that came to see our production of Ghosts here, which was kind of you know classic Russian theater. And we have roots in Chekhov and stuff. Um, and when we first used it, within a week, we lost like 20 that unliked us. But yeah. since then, we've gained, uh, oh, they, we, we, we've gained about seven. <laughs> so I want to say, kind of proves yeah. the point of the play. Well, yeah. well, I think it's, it's just, y'all are artists. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. it's probably just a, a certain demographic is falling away yeah. a little bit, and, and a different one is taking its place. I just uh, I just want to point out that um, in just now, John Friedman, who's the um, uh, editor for the Moscow Times, just posted, uh, John J. Hanlon and Graham Schmidt currently, seriously, almost, discussing the four roots of Russian obscenities. <laughs> How can you miss this? <laughs> also, Maria Krupnik, also in, in Russia, uh, compliments for just waving to John and to Matt. <laughs> so, so we're having live chat here. Oh, <laughs> So, um, uh, we, we have time for uh, one more comment or question. Um, anybody from the audience? I, I'll pose it. Um, one question that just came up, this actually came up in a radio interview with Noel, and we have John here, uh, and, and I wondered if uh, you might speak to this. Uh, just what did it mean to um, kind of embody the Russianness of this play to you? Was that something you strove after? And um, yeah, I wonder if you might speak to that. Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 um, to embody the Russians. Um, yeah. <laughs> Vodka, number one. Number two, I think mm -hmm. it's a speed of thought that it's really fascinated with. Um, um, and, and, and this duality of like tragedy and comedy. And that the, the comedy is <coughs> right there, it's under the surface. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, right, the intelligence there, like, there's so many themes, there's so much, it's so rich, it's so dense. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I try to make it accessible. It's me. It's still me. I'm not Russian, but I am, you know? I don't know. We're still in Austin. It's everything. It's human. So... I'm not doing an accent, so I'm not trying to be Russian. So that's an interesting question. Yeah. Well, John, can I invite you to have a last word? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what do you want me to say? Yeah. <laughs> can I ask one more little question of the actors? I'm just wondering what it's like, those of you, the three of you who are being a uh, force rather than a character, since you traditionally are a character, you could even make up a little backstory. And, you can really create the character. What is the difference in all of a sudden thinking, I'm just television, or I'm just vodka, or nothing? <laughs> you first. Logistically speaking, there is no difference, because the way I would approach a character, the way I would approach Masha, or the, you know, whatever, Medea would be the same way, which is to live and breathe with the other characters on the stage. So. Logistically, it's the same because it's even easier because we have full permission to to move, live, breathe uh, with him. It's kind of great too because we can just kind of listen to him <laughs> and uh, and ride that kinesthetic response. But in terms of uh, fucking, it's tricky. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it is. It is because it, and it's tricky to talk about too because I come off a little bit, I think, like snooty when I talk about it because I want to make sure that. When I'm talking about it, people that I'm talking to know that I'm smart, <laughs> which is, I think, natural. Um, so it's tricky because it's 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 very harmful to play the caricature, and yet that's kind of what it's all about—the harmfulness of the the character. So it's a balance. I think it's a it's a I think it does take a little bit of 
finesse and it and to be completely honest it's been a little trial and error right like one night one night <laughs> bucking is off the wall sex and another night she's very stern and 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 touchy and intellectual so well it, it's interesting because you brought it up it's like what does fucking mean what does that even mean yeah, yeah. and it's interesting because as the hero every night i drink vodka i watch tv but do i fuck <laughs> the internet is blowing up right now. <laughs> no, that's the question seems to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that yeah. But that's my question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and the other thing that's tricky about yours is that, as it turns out, in the end, she's not fucking. Right, she which we have discussed in a couple of times, which is very interesting to me. Yeah. So, she has to kind of fool the audience for a while there. Yeah. And then that was a nice touch. Did you? Was that you or was no, that the playwright? No, that's the whole oh, genius. Oh man, that was nice. That's nice. the whole genius of the play, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, and he, yeah. yeah, and so he, I was getting there, and it's, it's so important. We haven't yet talked about that at a talk back, which I was kind of surprised and at the same time relieved. But, but it kind of adds that layer of like it can't just be the one note character because it never is that. It never was that. It never, you know. So there's always that layer. Joey, we, we had a, <laughs> if I may cut in just for a second on that note. We had a quick discussion up here about what fucking is as opposed to the wife. And, and you bring up the intellectualness of the wife <coughs> playing the part of fucking. And it was it came to an agreement upon, up, uh, up here that it was actually fucking's way to make sure that she doesn't get kicked out yeah. she just by turns saying it. that it's all acceptable. of these things aren't fucking, so therefore she doesn't go. <laughs> So maybe now she's not even the wife. She's just smarter than everybody else. Exactly. Right. Yeah. She, yeah. Right. Yeah. she also has the line early on that says nobody in their right mind would give a fucking yeah. Right. Yeah. She's kind of got a point there too. Yeah. What a what a card to say. Did I say that out loud? That one is Isn't the line voluntarily? Somehow that like makes the line even better. I love that. But I, I, you you are actually right. That's one of the things that we had sort of come to as we were working on realizing that, well, of course everyone gets to stay because this problem were all three of you. And he refers to this several times. I can't live with all three of you. So when she is no longer fucking, there's only two of them. So of course everyone gets to yeah. stay. Yeah. Nice play. <laughs> so in a way, she kind of saves them all. So maybe we could say fucking is selfless? Or he does it the whole time. I mean, I, lately I've been, you know, like, I never or thought, like, what if, what if, what if, what if. It's like, I, lately I've been thinking, you know, like, he's the one from the get-go who's, he's, the god of his own trajectory of reality, right? He creates his own reality, so what if the whole time he really is the hero? He's created this whole thing, you know, right. to be as such. Right, well that's sort of the way that's where it gets yummy, right? directed it too, was it's like at the end of the day, he's there with the laptop, yep. right? And he's just yep. looked and, oh my god, where did that whole day go? Yep. Either he spent it in his imagination fighting this thing out, or he wrote the play right. that in his imagination he's the hero fighting this whole thing out, right? Yes. the day still here, right? All right, well, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to, since he's probably watching, I hope he's watching, thank Maxim Kurochkin for writing the public. Yeah. Especially thank John J. Hanlon for making it accessible for audiences here in Austin uh, and for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. And I invite all to continue this conversation and we'll end it on the stage right now. Thank you. Thank you.